Coronary artery disease is one of the top killers in the United States, and it is preventable. Coronary artery disease refers to the buildup of atherosclerotic plaque in the coronary arteries. The best way to treat it is, of course, to prevent it from happening in the first place. And that would entail good control of the known risk factors for coronary artery disease, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes, smoking. As a foundation for treatment, lifestyle interventions are important. By that, diet and exercise. For diet, we want to encourage a diet that's rich in fruits and vegetables and whole grains uh, to minimize intake of saturated fats, trans fats, sugar-sweetened beverages, and red meat. And then in terms of exercise, as individuals are able to, exercising for 30 to 60 minutes with moderately vigorous activity at least five times a week is recommended. So we use several different classes of medicines to treat coronary artery disease. Um, one group of medicines will be to control the risk factors that cause coronary disease because we want to minimize any progression of the atherosclerosis and sometimes even induce regression if we can. Second class of medicines will be those for symptomatic relief to decrease the frequency of the anginal episodes and improve a patient's quality of life. And then a third class of medicines will be to help reduce the risk of complications of coronary disease, such as a heart attack. Once someone has coronary artery disease, then tight control of the cholesterol, and the blood pressure, and the diabetes is very important. We at the Timmy Study Group at Brigham and Women's have shown that aggressive control of high cholesterol can help reduce the risk of having a heart attack in patients with coronary artery disease. Now, then in terms of controlling the symptoms and improving quality of life, there's several different classes of medicines that we can use. Perhaps the most commonly used one is nitroglycerin, given as a tablet under the tongue or a spray. That can help decrease the frequency of the anginal episodes. And there are other similar medicines that one could use to improve quality of life for patients. Then another class of medicines are those that help prevent the complications of coronary artery disease. The one we worry most about is having a heart attack. That's caused when the atherosclerotic plaque ruptures and a small blood clot actually forms within the coronary artery. That blood clot suddenly chokes off blood flow to the heart muscle. And so to help prevent that from happening, we typically will give a patient a, a mild blood thinner, something like aspirin or other medicines related to aspirin. Researchers here at Brigham and Women's have been at the forefront, not only of helping figure out the critical role that inflammation plays in the development of coronary artery disease, but also now in testing different anti-inflammatory therapies in patients with coronary disease to prevent the risk of future complications. We've seen very promising results. Other trials are underway as we speak, and this will be an area of active research in the future. And as we get more data from these trials, I believe this will become part of our armamentarium to better treat coronary artery disease. When medicine is not enough and a patient needs coronary revascularization, or in other words, restoring the blood flow to the heart muscle, there are two different ways we can approach that. One way is through angioplasty or percutaneous coronary intervention. That's a procedure done where we go through peripheral arteries and move catheters into the heart to relieve the blockages. The other way is through surgery, through coronary artery bypass grafting. So coronary artery bypass grafting is a procedure done by cardiac surgeons. Classically, the chest is opened and superfluous arteries or veins from other parts of the body are used to bypass the blockages. You can think about coronary artery bypass grafting as if there is a blockage in a road and you're building a detour road to go around that blockage. So at Mass General Brigham, we use a heart team approach where both cardiologists and cardiac surgeons review the data together and then meet with the patient and discuss all the options available to them. When patients have a heart attack or a myocardial infarction, where now there's been a rupture of the coronary plaque and now a small clot has formed within the coronary artery. This is a very serious situation. It certainly can be life-threatening, but for individuals who seek medical attention right away, if we open up that blocked artery, 
they typically have a very good prognosis. Patients who come in with a heart attack after we opened up the blocked artery, they're gonna go home on a bunch of medicines. But these medicines are designed to help protect them and protect their coronary arteries. So after a patient's been treated for their heart attack, if it's uncomplicated, most patients can go home in a few days. If they need surgery or if there are complications, then the stay obviously could be longer. And we typically will refer patients to cardiac rehabilitation. This is a structured exercise program where patients get advice about both diet and exercise and helps them on the road to recovery. You know, we know in pre-industrial societies that they don't have coronary artery disease. So we know this is a preventable disease. There's nothing you can do about the genetics, but what you can do is then aggressively treat the risk factors that we do have medicines for. High cholesterol, high blood pressure, smoking, and diabetes. Those can be treated through lifestyle intervention, and if that isn't sufficient, then we have lots of great medical options.